welcome to the extraordinary Lake District. Now, there's more than just beautiful scenery around here. With over 6,000 archaeological sites and monuments, there's plenty of history and a hint of mystery. Below me, some locals swear, lives the Lake District equivalent of the Loch Ness Monster, Bo Nessie. More about them. This year, he set himself a series of swimming challenges. But while he was out doing a spot of training on Lake Windermere with right-hand man and hotel general manager Andrew Tai, something strange happened, which led Thomas to become increasingly concerned about what lies beneath. Across there is the creature at the deep. Go on, give us the chilling details. We got up at 10 to 7 one morning because we knew there'd be no boat traffic on, and this was like a milk pond. Three foot wave lifted us up and down. I asked her what it was. It, it was surreal. I mean, you would almost think that a boat had gone down the middle of the lake. It was just surreal how yeah. it all happened. It sent two bow waves, one yeah. on either side of the boat. What Thomas and Andrew experienced that day is thought to be the fabled monster of the lake, Bo Nessie. Rumoured to be up to 70 feet in length, there have been many reported sightings of the monster, including some captured on film. This latest sighting prompted psychic investigator Dean Midas Maynard to get in touch with Thomas and Andrew, and now he's invited them on a serious search expedition. Cheese and breads and sandwiches, yeah. I'm actually fascinated by anything paranormal and unknown. Um, I did a lot of research up at Loch Ness years ago, and as soon as I found out about the stories and the signs of uh, Windermere, I, was, I just had to get a team together and spend some time looking for it. So, two months on from Tom and the Admiral's encounter, Dean and his team of investigators are heading out onto Windermere in the hope of providing answers to the mystery of Bo Nessie. We've got a sonar boat which will hopefully pick up some you know, evidence of something very large in Windermere. And we've got professional equipment, photography, cameras that will hopefully get some witness evidence for people visual so they can see it for themselves. <laughs> Dean's expedition has drummed up some mighty media interest thanks partly to compelling photo evidence from photographer Lyndon Adams. Though I'm not too sure if Thomas is taking it seriously enough yet. <laughs> Despite having a naughty noblet on board, Dean and his team set off for a serious day of monster hunting. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I'm, I've, sort of, I've got the nervous, sort of giggly excitement out of me now, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to just getting on with it and trying to find something now. I think it's going to be really, a really good day. So with Thomas and the Admiral's help, Will the team get to the bottom of their close encounter of the Windermere kind? I mean, don't look in the water because you might frighten them. That's what I'm saying to you. I love you, Tom, I do. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we can't, we can't laugh at it. I hope we, that we do see something for, for everybody's sake. Very excited about today. Very excited about it all. Hopefully we see something out there. We'll find out what happened later on. Healthy little piglets and completely exhausted. Back at Lake Windermere, Thomas Noblet and his sidekick, the Admiral, have joined forces with paranormal investigator Dean Maynard to investigate their alleged sighting of Bo Nessie, the monster of the lake. So this is nothing stopping something that's lived there for many, many years. i grow to such a size that it uh, takes over the, the depths of the lake. We're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah, we're going to need a bigger boat. The boats head south down the lake to reach the first area to be searched. We're now on our way to uh, a place called Gummers Howe. This is where Lyndon Adams took his very famous pictures of uh, a monster which he said was between 50 and 70 foot big. I'm Lyndon Adams, and it's one of my photographs which has actually sparked a great interest in the search for the uh, Bow and Essie. Me and my wife, we walked up to the top of Gummer's Howe. To the right-hand side of us, something large came out of the water. Took about 10 shots of this strange thing happening, and lo and behold, it was something which the scientists and the experts have been left baffled ever since. Lyndon takes his sighting of Bow and Essie very seriously. Meanwhile, hotelier Thomas Noblet, who was actually in the water when he and the Admiral had their close encounter, still doesn't quite know what to make of it all. 
If they do feel a boat going across the top, generally any livestock or... Uh, livestock? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't remember seeing cows. Livestock. <laughs> but distractions aside, the monster hunt is now in full swing as the sonar boat circles the area photographed by Lyndon. I would say we're virtually over the spot now. We're, we're anchored over it. Yeah, yeah, this is the spot. You know, this is where it came through. And basically, went that way through. Okay. Yeah. Dan, how deep is it? Only 21 feet here. Really? After an hour, nothing showing on the sonar except for a few large pike. But then local journalist Kim Ingalls swears she's just seen something. I wasn't the only one that saw it. Who else said they saw it? You saw something, didn't you? It just came out of the water. You were all standing talking and it came out of the water and then it went back again. Honestly. Well, you can't say I didn't try. It seems everyone's got the monster munches. And next, the boats head to the point where Thomas Noblet and the Admiral had their own spooky experience during training for Tom's charity swim. It's time to go monster hunting with the Noblet. Be warned, things could get wet. Um, what we're going to do is hopefully try and reenact Thomas's experience. He's going to get himself in the water, um, go for a swim alongside the boat, and uh, hopefully we'll get some, uh, something to happen. Dean has asked Thomas to swim in the same spot, as he's convinced that by reliving an experience, it can stimulate the memory of what happened and potentially invoke a repeat appearance of whatever it was Thomas saw that day. Uh, stripped up and yeah. right, right, there you go. Okay. Where's my man back? He was actually scared. Despite he'll just say that I wasn't scared. Here he is. This is it, Thomas. Are you ready yeah, for it? I'm ready. Are is you it, ready is for it? Is this exactly the area where it all happened? Or? This, uh, it was, wasn't it, Andrew? Just about here, yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. Good luck. Combed its gills and is it at last ready to make an appearance for the cameras? Or will Thomas the Gladiator Noblet live to fight another day? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> I think he scarped once I jumped in. He's gone back to, down to the southern half of the lake. So let's just say the gladiators scared off the monster. And as the expedition party returns to dry land, Dean and Thomas reflect on the day's hunting. I'm really glad we got everyone together and made the effort and did it, because it has still been a worthwhile day. It is a large lake. It's a very deep lake. You just look across and you just believe that there, there definitely could be something in there. I'm not disheartened by it, because, you know, obviously, we weren't, it wasn't fortunate to be our day today, but I still do believe from talking to people like yourself and Lyndon that there is something in there. So whatever lies beneath in Lake Windermere stays beneath, for now. But you've all been warned. <laughs>